This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi. This is like a vlog and I'm going to take you through a routine case mostly unedited. Let me know whether you like such unedited versions of the cases as well. He is a 70-year-old man with a mature white cataract. The surgery is being done under topical anesthesia. The side ports are being created. The globe is stabilized and turned slightly away so that I get a nice tunnel. <laughs> And similarly, the other side port is created. The incision is based in the limbus and note the intracorneal tunnel as well. Air is injected in followed by preservative-free xylocaine about 0.2 to 0.3 ml. Trypan blue is then injected. And during this time, I bend my cystitum, and this gives me about 20 seconds for the dye to stay in the capsule well enough. Dispersive OVD is injected into the antechamber, creating enough pressure for me to perform a good incision. The globe is stabilized with a fixation ring. It is moved slightly away. I am creating a vertical partial thickness groove uh, posterior to the posterior limbus. I have turned down the illumination just to make sure that the blade does not get overexposed. A perfect triplanar incision is created. Let's perform the rexis now. I've decided to go ahead with the forceps for the rexis since I was dealing with a white cataract. Stabilize the globe with the dialer through the side port and I am trying to puncture the anti-caps with the forceps. I realize that it is not puncturing easily and we can see these uh, folds on the anti-capsule. Well, I think it was predominantly because of the blunt tip of the forceps. Nevertheless, a flap could be raised and the rexus is begun. I always prefer to have a second instrument to the side port for some sort of a stabilization as it ensures that the globe is always looking up and straight. Uh, this will uh, help us in ensuring a better centration of the rexus. The flap is being torn in an anti-clockwise direction. Re-grasping the flap after a short span of tear uh, is a good way to control the uh, size and the direction of the tear. I am aiming at a 5mm size rexus. I have not done the two-stage rexus in this case. I was certain that the lens was not very intumescent. The rexus is done. A gentle hydrodissection is being performed. Just tap the nucleus to ensure that it's mobile. Now, HPMC is reinstated into the antechamber. Time to perform the fake emulsification. Initially, the settings are in the epinucleus mode and I'm aspirating the superficial cortex in the epinucleus. The settings are now switched to the chop mode. 
The tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus. The sharp chopper is used to create a vertical chop followed by a lateral separation. It's very obvious that the nucleus is quite soft and I need to be careful to use less energy to bury the tip. The nucleus is divided into multiple small fragments and now switching to the quadrant removal mode. Again using very low power, each fragment is pulled out of the bag and emulsified at the level of the rexus margin. In such cataracts, nucleus management is always quite easy. So the last fragment is emulsified out. Before the cortex extraction is begun, I usually have this habit of blowing the posterior capsule gently with a balance or solution just to flush out any fine lens matter which could be sticking onto the posterior capsule. Well, it has been a habit for me for many years now and I continue to do it. I am filling the chamber with a little bit of viscoelastic and cortex aspiration is now begun using bimanual cannula. One quadrant is dealt with first followed by switching of hands and taking care of the remaining cortex in the other quadrant. I carry out the flushing of the poster capsule one more time just to clean it up a little bit. I find this is a very easy and a quick way to just clean up the poster capsule. I inject a little bit of intracameral antibiotic into the capsule bag which is followed by injection of viscoelastic which deepens the capsular bag and makes it ready for the lens implantation. My assistant has already loaded the lens for me and I'm going to implant a multi-piece hydrophobic IOL. First, the distal haptic is gently negotiated into the bag and then the proximal haptic along with the haptic is gently dialed into the capsular bag. A commonly asked question in the comments is, why do I implant a multi-piece lens? Well, in our practice, we have different packages at different price ranges and the patient choose them based on their budget and I don't have any issue with this lens. The lens is a good value and performs pretty well with regards to the PCO rates as well. Uh, many of my younger colleagues find it difficult to load and implant a multi-piece lens but let me assure you uh, that it's not. The wood is being removed now. Initially, the irrigation probe is, is used to the main wound to passively flush out the ovary in the chamber. Now is the time to remove the OVD behind the lens as well and I always do it. So I am going in with my irrigation cannula, uh, lifting up the lens and then flushing out all the OVD which is behind the IOL. The settings are going to be the same as what we use for cortex aspiration. So once I am sure that the OVD both in front and behind the lens is washed out, now is the time to close. So to hydrate the incisions, I am using the same hydrodissection cannula. The side ports are done first followed by the main incision. It's important to direct the cannula anteriorly when you are doing a stromal hydration. 
it has to be placed in the corneal stroma directing towards the anterior stroma and not posteriorly uh, this ensures that we don't get desmoid membrane detachment during stromal hydration which can happen if you direct the cannula posteriorly once i'm sure of the stromal hydration of all the wounds before closing i usually instill 0.1 ml of intracameral antibiotic into the anterior chamber and we have been using cefuroxime for this and we follow the guidelines of the escrs before closing the pressure of the eye is being checked by tapping with the cannula over the cornea just to ensure that the eye is not hard and the pressure is all right i ask the patient whether he is able to see the light and then ask him how many lights does he see he confirms it correctly and it just ensures that the ocular perfusion is not compromised because of raised pressure a dollop of viscoelastic is put on the cornea before removing the speculum that's it the case is done and thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful